Hey, it's Kevin from KDW Mixing and Mastering. Just wanted to do a quick video today in uh, Cubase. Now, this one's specifically around the plugin manager, and I wanted to show you a couple of things. First off, how I structured my plugins, and and also a little trick to uh, to be able to adjust them without wiping everything out. So you get to your plugin manager devices. Plugin manager, and you usually see all your plugins here. There's your paths which can be hidden or shown. You want to add more paths, and then you've got this, and this will be your default. So I have a default state there, but then what I did was I created all of these paths here. Okay, so my first one there is process plugins, and if I click on that. I put in a few of these ones here. And the reason for that and why I call them process plugins is what I like to do with them is if I've got an audio file that I want to process. So I basically come down here to plugins and I know I go process and then I can open the D clicker there and then it's processed so I don't have to go and hunt you know the old way without structuring that I'd have to go through plugins and then I'd have to go through you know through the default then find okay where's the plugin I want oh, it's under that manufacturer and there it is there and it would take me forever so I just wanted to simplify all of the ones that are usually used for processing in one little section there. Then what you can do is you can create some dummy lists there just to separate them. So basically you just create a new collection empty and you just give it a name of all of those dashes and don't put any plugins in. And it's just the separator so you can select it but it's obviously useless but it just neatens this up and you'll see I've done it in a few sections there. So then what I did was I created uh, drums, just put in some plugins that I usually use on drums, you know, bass, guitars, keys, strings, vocals, and uh, buses, you know, so you mix buses, etc. If you want to put VMNTs and tape machines and whatever else. Then I put another separator in again, and then I put all my... EQs or your favorite EQs, whatever you want to do, compressors, distortion, various tools, uh, various effects things, reverbs, delays, and I separate it again. And then I put in some of the big vendors that have lots of plugins under their things. I put them there uh, just so I could quickly go to some of these big ones and just say, all right, I know I'm looking for an Isotope plugin. There it is, uh, and soft tube, and you know, PMM waves. If you've got lots of waves, ones, and that's the structure I did for that. And and you'll see when you're how it works when you're actually using the um, the channel. So when you're going into it, you know, you can obviously type in your plugin, depending on what you want it to be. But if you go across to this arrow here, right, you can be on default, and that'll list all the default settings. And then you just change to your, if you're working on your vocals, switch over to your vocals, and there's all your plugins. You know, you can pick a plugin. Close that. Okay, and it will stay in that subfolder until you change it again. So it'll keep going back to that vocal all the time. So you can keep pulling up and you're in that vocal. And you want to change and it will stay in there forever. And if you want to go back to default to find a plugin that you haven't added, you can. Okay, so now for the trick. So the trick with this, when you create these, if you don't, it's a good idea to plan this out on paper first because 
One thing is, is you can't move these around. So if they're not, if you don't create them in the correct order, so as you create each one, that's where it places it. And if you create a different one in a different order, you can't then move it. The only way to do it is to delete them all, restructure. If you wanted to add a group up here, you'd have to delete all of these to add a new one up there. There's no way to move it. If you want to add a new plugin, simply you can do that by just grabbing it and dragging and dropping it. And you can move the plugins around in the categories. But you can't create, you can't move these little subfolders categories around. So that could be a bit of a problem if you haven't structured it right. You don't want to start all over again. The other issue to be aware of that I've found with the plugin manager is if you go to all the trouble to create all of these, it doesn't seem to save them until you totally close Cubase. And I've had it happen before where Cubase crashes when I'm closing it. And if it crashes there's a good chance it didn't save what you did and you've lost all of the settings you did on your plugins. So just be aware of that. If you're wondering why oh, it didn't save, it could be that it, your Cubase crashed on exit. It seems to write the file on the exit. Okay, so what if you want to move things around and you want to make some major changes? Well, what I found was that if you go to a folder, this is in Windows, user, your username, app data, roaming, Steinberg. Now these folders could be hidden. You might have to go to your view and show hidden items. Steinberg, Cubase 8, 64. These might be slightly different depending on whether you're running 64-bit version or 32. And in that folder, you'll see an XML file, Plugin Manager. Now if you right-click on that and go Edit, there's your structure. So you can copy that file out, and, that, and this is a good thing too, because you can back this file up. If you like to make changes to your plugins all the time and you want to go back to something because you've made a mistake, you know, just copy this file somewhere else so you've got an instant backup of it. Okay, but what you can do, you don't have to really understand XML. You've only got to just look through this. You can quite easily see the structure. That There's the collection name of guitars there's all the plugins that are under guitars and that's where that collection ends so that whole section there is one of those categories that I call guitars and you will see that for bass they're all there and there's the dummy ones just to make the marker so if I wanted to move them and I, after I've made a backup I could I could copy the text or I could cut the text and then I could go and paste it, so I could in theory cut that. And I could move it up here and paste it back in. Now, if I save that, and then I go op close Cubase, so Cubase is closed, open it again, it will now have rearranged that. And that will be up the top, and then the process plugins, and then drum straight after that. So that's a handy little trick if you want to be able to move the structure around because you're not happy with it or you want to adjust it. Adding the plugins in is not really something you would do in this XML. It's just a really about moving the structure around and also taking a backup. So I just thought I'd share that because that was one thing that frustrated me. I had to do my plugin settings several times as I was trying things out and tweaking it and when I found that I could do that in the XML it gave me a lot more freedom because I could create my groups and then I could adjust them move them around to where I wanted them and it was really handy. Oh, I should mention that file also exists on a Mac. I don't have the exact location but I think it is stored in a preferences folder under library but you should be able to search it out just hunt around you'll find a cubase folder with that that exact file in and that file is almost identical to the windows version so you can almost take that xml from window xml from windows to mac and backwards and forwards the only thing that might change is some of the plugins may have changed names and may not be quite compatible but you can get your structure in and then you can 
tweak your plugins by adding the correct ones and removing the ones that are not found. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.